gamers all around the world. Today we're gonna be talking about Mongols and me giving my honest opinion about where the Mongols are at, what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses, and what should be changed if there's something to change in the first place. So Mongol used to be one of my favorite civs, and I still enjoy playing it, you know, but you know, I've, I've moved on to some other civs. I still like playing them, still doing the, the tower rush and stuff like that. Tower rushes are a lot weaker than they used to be. I think this mainly comes from the fact that people are better at defending tower rushes with their villagers, doing a little micro and all that. But I think that Mongol in the current day and age is a very, very good civ. It's very good on hybrid maps, probably the best civ on hybrid maps. When I say hybrid maps, I mean maps like, um, not Baltic, that's kind of like, we call it a water map because it's mostly water, not Alder Bay. Like Canal, um, Golden Heights, uh, like Himeyama, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, Rocky River, among those really good Mongolian Heights. A map like those is kind of water holes is where Mongol excels quite a bit, which is why it's the most banned civ in the tournament. So um, the reason why it's strong in on hybrid maps is because they can double produce Spearman in Dark Age, and basically with Khan you can have a uh, moving speed arrow to catch up with the enemy Spearman. Uh, you can quickly transition to Feudal, and then you can make a dock and then build arrow slits on your dock without mining stone or anything like that because you have uvu so very very strong civ on hybrid on land there is basically two versions of mongol as i like to call it there's the version of mongol where you get a really good neutral trade spot or spawn and then your trade is like full length you know from corner to corner and you're enjoying it you're loving the game and then there's the type where it's like you spawn in dry arabia and the neutral trade post is like behind your base on the middle of the you know of the map not the middle of the map but close to the edge right but middle side and then the game is completely different so mongol online maps is very dependent on or where your uh, neutral trade house spawns but you can do some stuff to avoid it you can do you know you always want to go tower rush into trading pretty much against almost every civ with mongol but if the trade is really really bad and you just can't do it uh you can also try doing two town centers and try maybe experiment with that a little bit and i've even seen some players just do like a tower rush into stable archer range and just double produce caching double produce archers and just kind of go go and you could also use like a villager and build towers around the enemy base the night of food and stuff like that overall i would say like i said mongol is a pretty good sim the massive issue that mongol has is the imperial age and mongol has received buffs in um uvu and white stupa the research that gives their buildings 30 percent extra health and it gives them the like the fire armor thing but i just don't think it's enough and the main problem is whenever you if you know if you play mongol you've probably had a situation like this you know you're trading your eco is great and then enemy cavalry just starts raiding you with knights or palace guards or men at arms are running everywhere and even though you have units that can kill enemy units you have enough economy you just cannot stop the raids there's like way too many units just running everywhere and you're losing a tower here a tower there and eventually you end up getting wrecked now i don't know if this will ever happen but at least at the top level this feels very uh, uh like v uh, like a weak point for mongols and the solution is very simple for them to have walls even if those walls are only accessible in imperial that's something that could potentially be done for mongols like give them some kind of walls where it's between stone walls and and, and wooden walls so it's it's not like a palisade wall like that weak but it's not like a full stone wall you can attack it with units but give mongol access to walls in imperial it would still maintain this kind of uh play style of you know they're raiding they, they have towers everywhere um but they're just very 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 weak in imperial and i feel i've had some games where i have better army than my opponent i can kill my opponent but there's raids everywhere and i cannot defend them it's a pretty big downside of mongol and why people don't play mongol in imperial like mongol is aggro 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 in feudal in castle and then i feel like 
even though you've been aggro, once the opponent walls off, suddenly you are the one defending. Even though you were in a good position, because the enemy has walls and you don't, suddenly you're becoming vulnerable. And then Mongo has so many cool things like torching buildings and getting stone. Uh, you know, they have all those extra stone upgrades uh, that they can use. But realistically, if the game is very action packed, you actually cannot upgrade anything that requires stone to upgrade because you're upgrading uh, uh, towers into bombard towers so you can somehow minimize uh, you know the run buys and, and people killing your shit but then if you upgrade all bombard towers then two rams come and they you know five shot the tower and say you know back to start the, the mongo gameplay imperial feels pretty disjointed is the best way to put it it feels pretty bad it's not about balance it just feels bad it's like i can't move out because i know there's gonna be stuff running in and even though i killed those things it doesn't matter, opponent replaces it and I lost like two bomber towers. And then the next wave is going to kill two more, the next wave two more, and then I'm out of towers and I'm dead. Uh, and that's something I dislike personally. Other than that, I think um, what I would like to see for Mongol is Deer Stones getting eco e economic upgrades on it. A lot of landmarks over time has rece have received this kind of treatment where the economy landmark can also upgrade economic um, upgrades in it. Like... Uh, like um, Kura Soros for Japanese, for example, it's a drop-off building, but it can also you can also upgrade stuff because right now the silver tree is more popular, and maybe even making deer stone like a big gur where you can drop off resources would be pretty cool as well. It's like a slight buff, but it would be buffing not Mongol as a sieve, but it would be buffing Mongol going maybe two town center play or Mongol staying one TC play without trading kind of styles. So that's something that I think could be cool. I think their Keshex are not, you know, to be used like other Sibs Knights where you're just denting in people. You gotta use them a little bit more careful, which I think is good. Uh, Mangudai feel pretty bad and pretty useless up until Imperial, where they feel pretty good and they're cool to use. But Feudal Mangudai and Castle Mangudai are pretty bad, to say the least. Uh, I don't really know what kind of changes they can get because the reason why they got nerfed is because of team games. They were like apparently OP in team games. So I would like to see, not necessarily a buff for Mangudai, but I would like to see them maybe their role change to something else because as it is right now, they're pretty, pretty bad. Like I feel like Mangudai are supposed to be this, this Mongol, you know, unique unit, but it, it just... A shit unit instead so maybe giving them something else giving them like an ability that does something changing the way that they work something like even making them cheaper so it's like okay well they do jack shit damage right but at least they're not that expensive and you can you know make a couple and harass with your con like that would be cool maybe if they're next to con they do bonus damage you know like something because in the current state even the castle Mangura is really bad. And I would like to see a, a little buff on the other Imperial landmark, which is the um, Kaganat's Palace. I think it should have a ticket system where just like you're purchasing like um, militia from Rus, I think, or, or um, the better comparison is the Japanese gunsmith landmark where you can, you get tickets and you can purchase like a hand cannoneer or Ozotsu, Ozutsu, or, or um, Bombard. I think Mongol having that on Kaganite's Palace would be pretty cool. So you can choose which units you want to make. Because right now that landmark is just complete RNG and it actually doesn't produce that many resources a minute. Like sometimes you can get, you know, two Mangudai uh, in a row and then you get like horse archers from Bruce, which is like, obviously you would prefer to get Nest of Bees or pow pow you know which because it just has more value and it's just better units in general so i think that'd be kind of cool if they had that other than that um i think mongo like i said pretty solid sieve pretty good i don't think it needs any massive buffs or massive nerfs there's like i said the biggest issue i would say is probably the imperial and lack of walls i don't really know how you would fix that Potentially, you could give them like more movement speed around towers, but then that might create some problems offensively. I don't know. Overall, still love playing Mongols, still think it's a good sieve, and probably it will, you know, continue to be played as long as the trade is good and it's not nerfed or something. 
Um, and I think in the future, <clears throat> I don't see any big changes to Mongol as a Civ. Uh, I would assume they're gonna kind of keep their identity where it's like, it's a, you know, Nomad Civ and you, you run on cavalry, you have towers to kind of gain vision and prevent enemy attacks and all that. Um, but that's it. Mongol, they're nice. Don't think it deserves any big nerfs. Don't think it deserves any big buffs. Some things, but potentially quality of life stuff, but nothing major. So if you're playing Mongol, it's very, very nice. Because also Mongol puts a lot of pressure and people have a hard time dealing with that. So that's it. That was my opinion on the Mongols. The next one we will be covering is going to be my honest opinion about Rus in its current state. What I think about it, which should be nerfed and so on and so forth. If you're watching on YouTube, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Check me out on Twitch or Pro Live right now. Twitch gamers, let's keep going.